Hello everyone, welcome to Southern Wreaths. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and share my video. Today I'm going to show you how I make this zebra wreath. These are the supplies I'm going to use to make this wreath. I'm going to be honest with you, I sat in my craft ring for about an hour today trying to figure out a wreath to make because I am so ready to start Halloween and fall. So I was just looking around my room and I noticed I have all of these zebra flowers and I don't think I'm ever going to use them. So I was like, well, I'll just go ahead and make myself use them. So they're all different. Uh, well, except for those two match, but they're kind of cute. These two are the same. I don't know if I'm going to use all of them. My plan is to use all of them. I also pulled a couple things out that I thought might go with it. I, again, I don't know if I'm going to use it because these are pretty heavy. Then I'm going to use a poof base and then just ruffle with the grayish silver. I found some silver frames at Dollar Tree, so I'm going to use that. I had this ribbon, and this is actually what inspired me. I looked over and saw it, and then I was like, well, I do have the zebra flowers, so I'm going to make a bow instead of putting ribbon all through. So I thought about using, this is mesh, but it's ribbon. And then I have this as a super sturdy and my zebra. I'm going to use hot glue to add the flowers, and I'm just going to go ahead and start adding the pipe cleaners to my frame. I'm using 14 pipe cleaners and I'm going to add one, six of them to the center rings at each crossbar. So I just wrap it around the two inside rings and then get it kind of even and twist three times. And I'm going to do that at each crossbar. And it's okay if they're not perfectly even. You just want them to be about the same. You don't want one way down here and one way up there. To add the pipe cleaners to the outside, I'm just going to pick any crossbar to start. Again, I'm going to pull them up evenly. I'm going over the two outside rings this time, twisting three times. Instead of jumping to the next crossbar, that would be too far away, I'm going to lay my pipe cleaner along the second from the outside ring. Where the pipe cleaner ends is where I'm going to add my next one. And I'll end up with eight on the outside. And again, I just make them as evenly as possible and twist three times to secure. For the base, I'm just going to use this basic 21 inch mesh. And I'll show you why it's called basic mesh. If you can see here, you can see straight through it. There's like no metallic strings running through it at all um so that's just a basic mesh it's not like a metallic mesh this one has the metallic strings running through it and then the more strings they have the like the tighter the the weave is for the metallic strings it's i believe it's called metallic mesh i'm not sure what the difference is but i get maybe it's called deluxe metallic mesh. I do have some over there. It's like solid black and it's like every single line is metallic. It's really pretty. It does cost some of that. This mesh is only good for bases. I'm adding the mesh on top of my pipe cleaner with a zip tie at the crossbar. I'm just going to pull it tight, trim it away, and then just cut my mesh away. I'm going to make 10 inch poofs, and I'm just going to use my mat to help me measure. I'll go to the 10, make my hand like that. Pull it out to the zero, squeeze, and add it into the next pipe cleaner. And then I twist it one, and then a half. And I just kind of pull it out and fluff my foot. And I'll show you again. You pull out to the zero, squeeze it, put it into the pipe cleaner, one, and then a half. 
I'm gonna finish doing the outside. When I'm doing my last poof, I'm just gonna set it on top of the zip tie and then pull those first pipe cleaners around everything and twist the one and a half times. All right, now I'm gonna open all of the pipe cleaners on the inside and then pull my mesh to the closest one. And then I just twist this one one time. I'm just basically pulling it into the center. And I'm gonna continue making my 10 inch poofs on the inside. And I do that the exact same way. You just pull it out, measure, place it in the pipe cleaner, twist one and a half, and fluff. When I make my last poof, I'm gonna stop before I add it, open my pipe cleaner that I used to pull the mesh into the center, and then just add this into it. Twisting again. Now I'm just gonna trim it away so I can attach it. I'm gonna push it through to the back. Just pull it through my frame. Then I'm gonna attach it at the same crossbar that I started my mesh up. And I like to use zip ties because they hold really well. I don't have to worry about anything slipping out. But, I do need to get longer ones. Okay. Pull it as tight as I can. Turn it away and then push it. And I'm pretty sure you'll be able to see how see-through this mesh is. You can see the frame. You see my hand. So you definitely only want to use this mesh for a base because it does not cover well. Cutting my 10 inch mesh at 24 inches and I'm just using my mat to measure. I just pull it to the 24 inch mark, grab it at the zero, pull it to the center and cut. And I'll do this for 14 pieces of mesh. After I cut out my mesh, I'm going to go ahead and add it to the to my wreath. I'm gonna do the ruffle method and I find it's easier to do that if I, if I put something heavy at the end. Then I'm just gonna lay it flat. I'm gonna take this in and I'm gonna start scrunching it. So you just grab and pull towards you. And you wanna try to keep in line. So what I like to do is just pick a point in the mesh and then just kinda keep it straight as you're gathering. You're just accordion folding it pretty much. All right, there's my ruffle. And then to add it, I just stick it as evenly as I can in the pipe cleaner. Twist one and a half times, and then I just kind of overlap it. Oh, actually, I'm not adding any ribbon into this, so I can go ahead and finish this off. So you'll do three twists. And then I just got my pin handy, so I'll just use it and just roll down the pipe cleaners. And you could use your finger, a pin, a glue stick, whatever you have handy. All right, I'll show you again. Just gather it all together. Add it into the pipe cleaner. And it is important to keep it as even as possible so that it looks nice when you spread it out. And then you just fluff it up against the self. So to add it to the outside, I just take my mesh, ruffle it the same way I've been doing, Add it in the same way, it just happens to turn. It will turn instead of laying flat like it does on top. It'll kind of poke out to the sides. So it just gives a different coverage. 
So like here you can see it's on top, but here it's kind of on the side and then you'll add all the way around and that will pretty much cover the wreath. I finished adding my ruffles. I ran out of this really pretty silver mesh and I had to use this like dull gray mesh, but I'm gonna put the bow right there so you won't be able to see it. It's close enough in color that it all goes together. But what I wanna do before I make my bow is figure out how big I wanna make it. So I'm just gonna lay some of these on the wreath. So I know I want my bow to be there and I'm pretty sure I want it to be in the top left corner. So I'm just gonna put this across from there, <clears throat> kind of balance it out because this is my largest flower. And then these two smaller ones will probably be towards the edge. So then I can just fill in with the other two. And I'll remove these stems. I don't know if I'll do that, but I think I want my bow to be about that big. So let's see. We'll do about a 10 inch bow. I'm gonna use this one on the bottom because it's the sturdiest of all of them. And then this one's gonna be on top because that's the one I mainly want to use. So I'm gonna do 12 inch tails to start. I can always trim them down if that's not what I want. But I'm gonna go ahead and twist it when I put it in so the pretty side's facing up. I'm gonna put it at the number 10 on my mat. And then I'm just gonna pull it out to the five. And that'll give me my 10 inch bow. And then I'll twist it away from myself. And then go to the 15 on this side. And if you don't have any way to measure it, you can push down on it and then hold them up. And if they're even, then you know. And you can also use a ruler. This mat really comes in handy for measuring them. I'll try to link this ribbon below. It looks like it's from Old Time Pottery. It is super duper messy. So if you don't want to use glitter, you can always use a different kind of ribbon. And I don't know if y'all know that, but every time I make a video, I do my best to link all of the items I use to make the wreath. Like I don't do like my mat and scissors and things like that, but I do like put all the ribbons and mesh, signs, anything like that that I use. I try to link it below so you can find the items if you want. If I can't find the exact item, I usually try to find one that's similar. All right, I'm gonna do three on each side of that one just to start. I can always add more later. Now I'm gonna add the, the mesh ribbon. Just gonna use what's already here as a base. I've never made a bow with this ribbon, so we'll have to see how it works. You can fuss with your bow now, or you can do it after. I'm gonna do it after. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull everything out of my bow dabra. Try to hold it in the center as best I can. And then wrap my pipe cleaner around it in the center. And you wanna check to make sure you have it centered. Might need to go to the left just a smidge. Right, and then I'm gonna grab the bow and pull it away. And then, and then twist as tightly as I can. Now I'm gonna do my best to fluff this. I don't know if I like this or not. 
It's different. I'm going to dovetail the ends of my ribbons. That one I'm just going to leave straight. Right, I'm going to attach it to the wreath frame with my pipe cleaner. I'm just going to feed it through the mesh. And then I'm just twisting it around the frame. And then I can always trim down the tails if I don't like how big they are when I'm done. I accidentally made one of the loops too small, so I'm just using it for a center. I'm either going to hot glue these or attach them with the wire. We'll just see how it goes and how big the stem is. So like this one has a good size stem, so I could feed that through to the back and use a zip tie. So I want this opposite that, so I think I want it down here in the corner. So I stuck that around to the back. I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie it. And then I'll bend the stem. I am currently smushing my bow, which I hate doing because I have to refluff it, but I think that's gonna be the best way to add these. So I'm gonna sacrifice it. But if you decide to just hot glue whatever it is that you're making, if you just decide to hot glue it, then you won't have to smush your bow. I'm kind of twisting it around and then I'm gonna make sure it's tucked behind so it doesn't poke out. All right, there's one flower. I could just space these out and then put the smaller ones in between which is probably gonna look nicer. So see the back of these, some of them came off. So I'm gonna go through and glue them on. And I'm just gonna run a bead of glue and then lay it in there until it dries. All right, I went ahead and glued a few of the other leaves too because they were loose, just so it doesn't come apart. And all it was was the back stem was coming detached and making it where the leaves didn't want to stand up. I think I'm going to add some loops to the back and these I, I know I'm going to glue in. I'm just going to add glue to this. Be super duper careful if you do this because the some ribbons are thinner than others, and it can burn you. Yeah, I think this will help. Let's look. Yeah, I want to trim them just slightly. 
think I'm going to take however much this is. It's about five inches off. All right, so they should be dried. I'm gonna go ahead and add them. Yeah, I think right there's good. And I'm basically just gluing it to another um, loop that's here. And you can see right here, I'm just pushing it up against another loop. I'm going to add three more, maybe. You know, I'll be honest, this isn't my favorite wreath, but all I want to do is make Halloween wreaths. And I am waiting on my Halloween order to come in, so I can't start them yet. And every time I go to make something, my head just automatically goes to Halloween. These are really cool and they're really pretty. They're all com wire completely and this is like mesh. You can see straight through it. It's really pretty. Right, I'm going to hang this up and see what it looks like. And if I like it, I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue to these to get it to stay. I did like the placement of these, but I definitely want some things sticking out of them. These are so messy. I kind of hate to even use them, but they're really pretty. So I think what I'm going to do is end up trimming them about right here. Because I don't, I don't need the whole thing. Right. Oops. <laughs> right there. And then I'm just going to start sticking it behind some of these just to fill in. And you can use both. So I'm going to use both ends. Looking at this when I hung it up, it looks very Christmassy. I have these branches and these are poinsettias. So maybe I'll just call this Christmas in July. Even though it can be hung up all year long, but the sparkle and certain elements make it more Christmassy. But that's it. That's how I made my zebra wreath if y'all have any questions please leave them in the comments below or you can email me at craftingwithleeyahoo.com thanks so much for watching and if y'all learned anything today or if you like my video please like share and subscribe thank you